My name is Laurie Needham and I'm a researcher at the University of Bath. Today I'm going to talk about using computer vision and deep learning methods to capture skeleton push start performance characteristics. Skeleton is a winter Olympic sport where athletes propel themselves head first down an ice track in the shortest possible time. During the push start, athletes accelerate the sled in a bent over running position before loading onto the sled in a prone driving position. And while we know that contributors to sled velocity include things like lower limb power and sprinting ability, technique is likely to further contribute to the generation of sled velocity. And so attaining information about push start kinematics will be beneficial for researchers, coaches and athletes looking to understand and enhance performance. But to date, limited push start kinematic information is available, perhaps due in part to the limitations associated with current motion capture technology and the challenging environment in which skeleton takes place in. Computer vision has always played an important role within biomechanics research, providing us with the tools to calibrate camera systems and track and reconstruct reflective marker locations. But advances in computer vision technology and deep learning are providing viable alternatives to traditional marker-based motion capture systems, whether that be using detection and tracking methods to estimate the motion of people or objects, or using pose estimation methods to detect and track landmarks of interest. Ultimately, what these tools provide us with is a set of options to take biomechanics into the wild and capture ecologically valid data. And so the aim of this study was to compare our computer vision and deep learning based approach to marker based motion capture in an ecologically valid setting, in this case at the skeleton push track. And to do this, we asked 12 GB skeleton athletes to perform three maximal effort pushes at the University of Bath's dry land training facility. To capture kinematic information about the push start, we used 15 Qualysys marker-based motion capture cameras and nine GI machine vision cameras, which essentially capture high-resolution RGB image data. Both systems capture data at 200 Hz and were frame-locked and frame-aligned via an external periodic TTL pulse, which not only ensured that both systems started and stopped recording at the same time, but it also ensured that frames were captured synchronously in all cameras without drift. The policy system is calibrated using standard wand calibration as per the manufacturer's recommendations. The machine vision cameras were calibrated using a binary dot matrix which allowed for the calculation of each camera's intrinsics and the camera extrinsics were computed using a bundle adjustment algorithm. Both systems Euclidean spaces were aligned by tracking the quality L frame and you can see, see an example of this on the left hand image. Our ground truth data or gold standard data were captured by placing a full body marker set on each athlete and a further four markers on the sled. Once marker-based data were labelled and gap-filled, it was exported to Visual 3D and a full-body IK model was constructed, as well as a rigid sled model. This permitted the calculation of central mass velocity and sled velocity, as well as footfall events such as ground contact time, flight time, step time, step length and step frequency, where ground contact events were calculated using the kinematic algorithm provided by Hansaker. So the methods presented here build upon previous work from within our research group, which looked to capture the foot timing information during running and sprinting. And the first step of this method is to segment the foreground and background using a traditional background segmentation method, which takes a background model and thresholds it against the current frame. And you can see an example of that here. However, this method didn't work particularly well in dynamic lighting conditions and with the dynamic background scene that we experienced at the skeleton push track. Instead, we utilised a convolutional neural network based human part segmentation method that allowed us to robustly segment the athlete with a high resolution mask and had the added advantage that it was able to segment body parts too. To detect approximate footfall locations, the foreground segmentations from each 2D image plane were reprojected back into the 3D space to generate a voxel hull representation of the athlete from overlapping projections. When reprojections intersected the ground plane, this information was extracted to create an occupancy map showing the, the approximate footfall locations and timings. And you can see an example of this in the left hand video. In this application, we found it necessary to raise the ground plane by two and a half centimeters. And this simply helps us reduce the amount of noise and occlusion caused by the sled moving along the true ground plane. 3D foot localization refinement is achieved by optimizing a roughly foot sized 3D bounding box around the foot and projecting this from the 3D space back into each 2D camera view to provide multiple views of the foot contact. Splitting the foot into vertical slices and extracting color and gradient based features from each slice allows us to track the vertical motion of the foot and using a forwards and backwards search from the approximated mid stance, we can determine the frame of touchdown and the frame of toe off. 
and an example is provided here in the bottom left hand side of the screen. So in this work we tracked the sled by um, estimating the motion of the hand that was in contact with the sled. We again use foreground segmentation information, this time focusing upon the hand forearm mask seen here in yellow. We generated occupancy maps by projecting the hand forearm mask into the 3D space to create another voxel hull representation, this time of the hand. And we then determined the local minimum of the hand voxels and tracked this point from frame to frame. And you can see an example of this as the red blob moving down the left hand side of the screen. Finally, to determine the athlete's centre of mass location and velocity, we used a CNN-based pose estimation method to provide approximate 2D joint centre locations. In this case, we use open pose simply because, unlike many of the other pose estimation algorithms, it also has a trained foot model. Each 3D field of view is then passed through the network and 3D joint centres were reconstructed by projecting all of the instances of a joint centre in the 3D space and optimising for the intersect of the rays. And this is essentially the same process that your marker-based motion capture goes through to give you 3D reconstructions of the uh, marker locations. Once we have 3D joint centre estimates, we can then use centre of mass model of our choice and estimate the athlete's centre of mass displacement and velocity. In terms of validation results, for spatial variables, we saw excellent agreement between our system and our ground truth data, with an average difference in step length of around one millimetre. What this demonstrates is that despite the absence of markers, we were able to very reliably find a position on the foot and track this through, through space and time. Now, comparing these results to other commercial-based systems for field-based data collection, we saw improved accuracy on the OptiJump system, on IMU-based step length calculation, and on an ultra-wideband IMU hybrid system as well. For temporal variables, we saw good agreement with ground contact times and flight times falling within approximately one and a half frames of the ground truth data. We generally saw a systematic overestimation of ground contact time and a systematic underestimation of flight time. And this was due to the fact that we'd had to raise the ground plane by two and a half centimetres to reduce the occlusions caused by the sled. What this meant was that we had a systematic early detection of ground contact and a systematically late detection of tow off events. However, when you look at the step times, these two differences essentially cancel each other out. And the images on the left and right here show examples of why exactly we had to raise the ground plane to reduce the noise caused by the sled. Again, comparing to other commercial based systems, the res our results were similar to those reported for OptoJump and slightly better than those reported for an ankle based IMU ultra wideband positioning system. Results for the centre of mass and sled tracking demonstrated good agreement between the athlete centre of mass velocity and sled velocity when averaged across the step. Now it's important to note here that these results were averaged for the step and the results, particularly those using open pose, were not able to provide uh, an accurate full waveform. And this highlights that researchers need to be careful when using pose estimation methods such as open pose to ensure that such a system can provide accurate and reliable joint centre locations for biomechanical applications. A second limitation we had with our sled velocity tracking method is that when athletes are loading onto the sled, they actually let go of the sled, which means that the sled velocity cannot be tracked at a critical time. And so to address this issue, we've actually since published work um, improving athlete tracking and sled tracking. And as you can see from the results here, we're actually now able to track the, the full waveform again uh, with good agreement with the ground truth data. And if you're interested in the intricacies of these methods, then check out the paper um, via the QR code here. And so to conclude, we have provided a computer vision deep learning based approach to capture kinematic data. And we validated this in a real world setting, and in this case for skeleton push starts. This system is completely non-invasive and fully automated from capture to providing results. And ultimately what it does is provide us with the ability to capture data in an ecologically valid setting and take biomechanics into the wild. In terms of application, we now have a tool that coaches can use to monitor technique where traditional motion capture techniques may not be applicable.
So thanks for watching and I'd just like to say thank you to the British Lobster and Skeleton Association for their time and support. Without their help this project would not have been possible. If you have any questions about the data I've presented here today or about our system please do get in touch.